Uh, doing a quick Fusion Up 360 update as to where I'm at. I've got my CNC mill up and running full steam ahead. Uh, now I'm using Fusion 360 in a more efficient way. I've been using components. I made a uh, model here, saved it. I made a component for it called Arm 1, and to be able to make an arm real quick, I would come up here to where I'd modeled one of my tubing clamps, insert into the current design, hit OK. There's my tubing clamp. Come up to where I modeled my tubes that I'm using, which are 16 millimeter by 330. Insert into design. There it is. Then I can come in, grab it, pretty much arrange it right how I want it. Once that's done, hit OK. Come back around. You can see my components are right here in the top. Hit my tubing clamp, hit move, hit copy. Drag it out to 52 millimeters, which is where I have my motor plates modeled. So there's that. Come back over to my motor plate. Insert into current design. Come over. We'll rotate it. Move it up. Move it over. And then it's pretty much lined up, but I can use the alignment feature probably to get the holes perfect once it's set up in, in the right place. I can come on it back. I can then go back to my tubing clamps. I can copy both of them if I wanted to, but we'll want to take this one, hit move. Create copy. Come all the way down. Hit OK. I'd make another clamp. So anyway, there's one arm and it is just that quick to be able to put an arm in there. If I come back and highlight the entire component, I can then move it. So now I can rotate it to any position that I want. And as I'm doing that, I'd wind up with something very similar to this, which gives me a mock-up of all four arms. I can go in and I can move individual arms by selecting the components. And that gives me the ability to make changes to arms if I want to move clamps, things like that. And I can go back to the entire thing. Here it is. If I want to, I can come in on the top plate. Now I can design my top plate and I can come in and reference these holes. And I can tag these holes perfectly for getting the plate sent off for either my 3D printer for mock-up. And once I'm happy with everything, I can then get those holes translated over to my CNC. My CNC is dimensionally very accurate and I've had no problems with moving things from Fusion 360 to 3D printer and then taking it out and printing or cutting it on my CNC mill. I've done a couple Dave C uh, frames. Cat's out of here, she's scared. Um, little three and a half inch basher. It's gonna be about 140 grams all up weight without battery. Um, learning how to get some things done like the little bushings for compressing the side plate. I could probably cut it more accurate enough so that way the carbon fiber would be directly matching to the other piece like bottom plate to side plate but i may just tpu bushings that way if i hit something uh i won't maybe i'll kill a side plate but i won't break that nub off hopefully hopefully the tpu will be a little bumper and a cushion um sitting here making a couple dave c these are the three inch versions i've got four inch arms the arms are three millimeter and I've got 1.5 millimeter for doing the uh, top and the bottom plates. So yeah, I've got some pretty good clean cuts. The only thing I've got a problem with really is the tabs, which I've been getting better on the tabs as I learn exactly what type of height and width I need for different types of bits. Like on a 1.8 or two millimeter bit, I can use a different tab width than say if I use a three millimeter end mill so i either blow through the tab or i have too much tab and that's just coming down to experience and figuring out what i can do for the cutter i ended up ordering about 40 alien arms and that's going to be useful for when i go to prototype some things i've got cheater quad stuff that i'm going to be doing and building and playing around with uh, so these are going to be my arms i've got my base plates set up so where i have an easy time of being able to just make use arms that I already have. I've got the bolt pattern down so I can translate that to any of my builds. These are four millimeter arms and I got them for $2 a piece from Made to Made RC. So why bother with cutting 
arms right now. If it takes me forever to cut a set of arms. Why do that? It's not even worth it. It's not worth buying the carbon fiber to turn around and cut it. So I'm gonna be using these alien arms for a while. Next up, um, I've got my Beast Class 13 inch. These are Zing 4214 400 kV motors. Catalyst Machine Works, Tasmanian V2. Ready-made RCs, Strix 65 amp ESCs are like 15, 16 bucks a piece. I mean, I was able to kind of cheap out on this thing a little bit compared to what the normal Beast class will run you. I 3D printed everything that's in blue. Um, wire holders, uh, I gave myself enough wire so that way if I wanted to extend these out for like a 15 or a 16 inch prop, I can. Uh, GoPro actually has a Immortal T holder put into it. Uh, better VTX uh, SMA mount for the antenna. GPS has moved away from the GoPro, so that way it doesn't get shit on by the GoPro. It's probably still too close, but it's better than having it mounted to the GoPro. Dual pigtails, because I'm using 6S2P packs, and I'm putting two of them together, so this becomes a 6S4 parallel. By doing that, basically each uh, row of cells in the parallel um, battery array, I guess you could say, is powering its own individual motor. These motors shouldn't be pulling more than like 20 amps max at full throttle. These are the GemFan 13 by 10s. Some of the motor thrust uh, results I've seen on a motor stand for these Zing motors was on 6S power with a 14 inch prop on a thrust stand, it was generating like three kilograms of thrust at full throttle, but only 20 amps per motor essentially at full throttle on a thrust stand. So in the air, I should not be pulling anywhere close to 20 amps per motor. The VTC 5D cells I have are rated for like 15 to 20 amps continuous with a 35 amp burst. So if I figure 15 amps per battery times four, I'm looking at 60 amps all up uh, continuous current on that pack. This thing shouldn't pull more than 60 amps in the air when flying at full throttle. So it means for lithium ions, I shouldn't have to look for a throttle cut on this. So I've got 11,400 milliamp hours on this thing. The first time I flew it, I got 18 minutes of flight time and I was out in a spot where I could cruise pretty much continuously during those 18 minutes at 55 miles an hour. So that thing's got a fair amount of flight time. Good news is I can take one of the packs off of this guy and I can move it over to the seven inch. The seven inch with a 6,000 milliamp hour 6S2 parallel is getting 23 minutes of flight time, cruising at like 40, 45 miles an hour. So two packs from this will fly this or one of the packs off of this will fly this. And that gives me a heck of a lot of cruising time between the two of these guys. What I was showing you just a minute ago in Fusion was a mock-up for what would essentially be a 15 inch build. It's gonna be a little bit of a cheaper 15 inch build. Gonna go for like a dead cat design. And mounting the 13 inch props, I've got tons of room in the front so I wouldn't have to worry about props in view. The Beast class that I'm flying right now has a teeny bit of props in view but that's on like a 30 degree up tilt. I changed it to 35 and there should be very little props in view. Um, I've got enough distance between the rear motors and the side and the sides that I should be able to swing a 15 inch prop. The beast class, when you look at it, this is how close, I mean, I can't even get my finger in there. This is how close it is on 13 inch props. So with this thing, I've got tons of room. If I ran 13 inch props, I can go up to probably 15. This is not even finalized. This is just prototype me learning Fusion 360 and being able to actually play with the components. So yeah, there's a bit of an update. Uh, it's been a while. I'm on vacation and learning my CNC mill and it's a Millwright Mega V. If anyone was interested, it's 19 by 19. I'll throw a few videos up on that here in a little bit. It's basically cut to be a dust-free environment with, go away. Anyway, I'm going to go through and I'll put a few videos up on the mill and shows what the CNC is doing. It's uh, set up to run underwater with water filtration and it's basically dust free. I don't have to worry about anything when it comes to having carbon fiber dust. I basically grab it in a filter and clean it up and throw, you know, throw the filter in a Ziploc bag and all my dust is contained in the filter. Thanks for watching.
So I just got done running an operation on a little three and a half inch frame that I made and the water is extremely dirty from using a three inch, uh, not three inch, three millimeter burr bit. I showed in the other video while the mill is running, this is a water filter. Catch all of my debris from the carbon dust. Cutting underwater, I basically made it so I'm in a dust free environment. I raised the water level here by a little standoff, kind of works similar to how your toilet raises the water in the bowl. So if I pull this thing up, it raises the water height. If I absolutely just remove it, I can now drain the entire water basin. So now all my water is going to come down through here. And I'm going to rinse out the entire basin. When I do this, I can actually shut off my flow. I've got a hose down here. I'll shut off my flow for my lock line, bring out my hose, and once I turn on the valve for the hose, I can now rinse everything down. The filter actually works really well. It's an aquarium polishing mat and it catches all the fine dust very, very well. It'll get to the point where this water runs pretty much clear and all I have to do is keep <coughs> cycling. Got something stuck in my throat. All I gotta do is keep cycling the water and basically the aquarium down below will soon be pretty much running perfectly crystal clear because the polishing mat that I have does a really good job of catching all this fine material. I'm gonna home the machine real quick, get it out of the way. And I'll be able to show you the frame that I just made a minute ago. Was wondering this is a CNC by Millwright they call it the Mega V I've got this one little bushing adapter right here so where when I pull it out it'll completely drain the entire basin I usually do it in two steps that way I don't overflow down here it's only going to allow so much capacity to run through and if I do the entire water height that can actually overfill the 3D printed filter height that I made. And you can see there's a ton of debris. I was running this thing pretty much all day today doing a couple different frames and plates. So here's a little three inch or three and a half inch I should say. Um, I've got a little Dremel device. I'll go through it. I'll cut the tabs out of it. That'll free it off of the piece. Then I'll go through, sand the tabs down, and it'll be pretty much ready to move over. I've got side plates that bolt on. I'll show pictures of it later. Uh, this will pretty much be the first flying frame that I've built off of the mill. So, anyway, quick update.